they said that he was a low life gold digging slack of a loser that was using Whitney Houston for her money. I mean, I don't know if Whitney would say that, but I know what that's what Kern said. It's straight up madness everywhere I look. Used to be a straight A student. Now he's a crook, robbing people just to smoke and shoot up. Used to have a coupe cut, now he's a poop butt. Dropped out of school and he joins the neighborhood gang. Hanging on the street selling cane. Well, hello, love bugs. Hello, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important, girl, to my success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of our Bella book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and for a small monthly $5 donation, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before YouTube gets it, if YouTube gets it. Now, let's talk about Bobby the Brown's Every Little Step. I think this is part 20. We left off, Bobby was starting to talk about his concerns with being married to Whitney Houston. You know, because they consider him to be a everlasting gobstopper in regards to Whitney Houston's money. What Bobby Brown says is that he had more money than Whitney Houston when he met her. He had 50 mil in the bank. OK, and most times when they went out, they went out on his money, not her money. OK, so. He says that part of the reason when they finally broke up and when he left Whitney, he left Whitney with everything, okay? Because he wanted to show to her and everybody else that it wasn't about the money. Listen, Bobby the Brown, Bobby Bigfoot Brown, I love you, bro. I love you. But see, you said what it was about earlier on in the book. It wasn't about money with Whitney Houston. It was about status because you already had your own money. Okay. Let's let let's all be clear. For all you people that believe that Whitney Houston or that he got with Whitney Houston because of her money, answer no. That wasn't it. Bobby Brown, Bobby Bigfoot Brown, Bobby Belfort, you know, Buford, um Bull Dagger, whatever you want to call him, Brown, okay, got with Whitney the Houston for status. Remember when we talked about before, when he got married to the Whitney Houston, the thoughts in his mind was, okay, I'm about to leave all this other vagina alone to be with Whitney the Houston. But see, oh no, I can't let this other vagina get in the way of me, Bobby the Brown, being married to Whitney Houston. That put me on a whole different level. That means... <clears throat> In his mind, that dirty little boy from New Edition that he been fighting to get away from for fucking years, he will finally not be that dirty little boy from New Edition once he marries Whitney Houston. He will now be Whitney Houston's husband. But see, Bobby the Brown showed me that he has a lot of insecurities in this book. Okay, so he was so insecure that he couldn't understand, baby, you don't have to be married to Whitney Houston to be a Bobby Brown. So to expound a little more, okay, how he said the people viewed him was that, oh, let me, okay, I gotta write this down, was that he was a low life gold digging stack of a loose, slag of a, hold on, hold on. Let me get this right, okay. They said that he was a low life gold digging slack of a loser that, was using Whitney Houston for her money. I mean, I don't know if Whitney would say that, but I know what that's what Kern said. Kern Stephens said that his ass used her. You heard me, used her. Now, like I said, the first time a nigga use you and you get caught up, okay. All right, Kern, okay, you're bad. Or oh, they're bad, okay? Because anybody take, takes advantage of somebody with a pure heart, that's on them, okay? But Karen, when you get to the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth time, you already know who this nigga is. Why are you still feeding him money when you already know who this nigga is? Okay, that's all I'm saying. You know, so according to the Karen, 
that's what you was to her. Now, Bobby's saying that he wasn't that person to the Whitney Houston at all. He wasn't with about like that with her. I believe it because that was his wife, you know? And I believe he loved his wife. Yeah, and it's funny because he kind of says that he thought that it was a PR stunt when Whitney married him because, you know, it was supposed to have been a cover-up for Robin Crawford. But now I'm looking at you, Bobby, you know, just because it wasn't let's say concocted by your team, does it mean that it wasn't a stunt? Because to me, that was a whole caper. You might've went in it initially with the caper on the brain, but then you fell in love. Cause like you said, Whitney Houston had good pussy. Now, because Bobby Brown said that Clive Davis, you know, Mr. Clive uh, was cheating Whitney Houston out of her money, he decided to take over finances for her. Mm -hmm. Remember he told, uh, John Houston earlier, yeah, I'm going to take real good care of your daughter and her money, okay? Now, I don't think that that was appropriate for you to say out loud, Bobby, but I mean, anyway, so what Bobby Brown says is that Clive Davis was old shysty motherfucker anyway. I mean, we all know that. He said that Whitney Houston's had so many different streams of revenue out there that she didn't even know about. Okay, there could have been Whitney Houston doll babies out there, Whitney Houston lunch boxes out there, Whitney Houston um, shoestrings out there. Whitney didn't know about these extra uh, streams of revenue, but Bobby did. And Bobby said, give me your money. Give me all Whitney Houston's money. Get this lady what she deserved. And he said proudly that eventually Whitney Houston got what she okay. deserved. Now, because he was in charge of all the money in regards to Whitney Houston and the Bobby Brown finances, right? Bobby said the biggest mistake he ever did in his life was to combine his finances with his wife's. I don't know about that. I mean, because people do it all the time. But I think he says that because, you know, once it's combined and when things go wrong, then you got to go through, you know, going to the bank and I mean, going to the judge and saying, Mr. Judge, man, I bought this. She didn't buy it. Anyway, he says that uh, that was one of the biggest mistakes he's ever did in his life to put him and Whitney's money together. I don't think you thought that it was a mistake when you first did it, because like I said, you had a plan not to steal Whitney's money, not to steal it, but you wanted to be the bad motherfucker that was in charge of Whitney. You thought you was going to be, what do they call him? Husbander, uh, manager, like, you know, when the husband be in charge of the lady, uh, -uh I don't like situations like that, but that's what uh, Bobby was trying to do. You know, like how Monique and her husband is, you know, every time a situation has happened where you have a woman, a successful woman, and the damn husband is the manager, that shit never works, right? You know that, right? Now, getting back to why it was the biggest mistake he ever did by allowing Nippy Inc. to take care of Whitney and his, you know, bills, because rich people pay people to pay people. Okay, because they don't want to have to worry about the little nuances about life, like fucking bills. Okay, they want to just be able to just party, make money, raise their kids, or do whatever it is. So these niggas pay people to pay people. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so he found out on a humble, not on a humble. Well, yeah, on a humble. Okay, that Nippy's people wasn't paying Bobby the Brown's child support. Okay, and let me tell you how he found out. Okay. LaPrincia and that bitch Kim, mm -hmm. the one who tricked his ass, according to the Bobby Brown, into sleeping with her and having Bobby Brown Jr. This is so crazy to me. Okay, so you tricked his ass to sleep with you, which I don't believe, because I'm like, don't your pickle have to be hard? But you tricked his ass to sleep with you, then you be mad when the nigga don't pay child support, because let me go on further. So anyway, he wasn't paying, Nippy's people wasn't paying his child support, okay? Mm -hmm. So Bob hops out of the car. Alicia just dropped his ass off, okay? At the time, they together. Or she working with him to try to help him to be a better person, something like that, okay? So Bob hop out the car, try to go inside the restaurant to meet LaPrincia, Kim's first daughter, because Bobby Jr. is the second baby, you know? But 
He hopping out the car, skipped to Malone to the damn restaurant so he can go meet his baby. And who intercepted his ass but the motherfucking child support police? You bitches ain't shit Kill for you, that. bitch. I knew you was a bitch when you got that little boy shot down there to the Orchard Park, okay? But you ain't shit for that, okay? Your ass, he trying to go see his daughter and you threw his ass in a trick bag. You knew. You was like, La Princia, baby, I need you to go meet your father down there to the uh, uh, Rusty Bucket Crab Barrel cafe down there that's what i need you to do he ain't paid child support in forever just go just go what 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 just go baby just go okay so bobby the brown you know goes on to plead his case he says he wants you people to know that not only was he labeled a scuzz bucket a cheetah uh, that stole all the Whitney Houston's money, but he wants y'all to know that Whitney Houston was old cheater herself. Am I surprised? Hell to the no. And who did she cheat with? But all the ladies wanted to cheat with the Tupac. Not me. He was too little. Okay. All these rappers are too little. But anyway, all the ladies wanted to cheat with the Tupac. Okay. So Whitney Houston was cheating with the Tupac. Bobby the Brown said, listen, you about to ruin our merge over you creeping around with the Tupac. When Houston was out, she said, I don't give a fuck. That's the Tupac. I don't know. I don't know. I, it's like, I don't know. Like, but but for real, y'all, can y'all be mad at her for wanting to be with the Tupac? I bet you it's about 80 million women out here that still will want to be with the Tupac. Not me. That motherfucker crazy. Everybody that talk about him say he was crazy. You know, you thinking that you laying in the bed with Tupac and y'all having, you know, special comforts and he rubbing on you. Next minute, you know, he put the blicker in your face. Talking about is you stealing from him. No, I don't have time for all that bullshit. That nigga is crazy. So anyway, it came to a head when Tupac was murdered. He said that him and Whitney was in a convertible somewhere riding around. When she got the news on the radio, the Whitney, yes, the Whitney, she couldn't even hold herself together. She was, I mean, literally sobbing, tears, shaking, oh, my Tupac, my Tupac. She was doing all that in front of her husband. I was like, ooh, this bitch tried it. In front of the Bobby Brown, yeah, she liked that thug or oh, wannabe thug dick. Because let me put this in front of you. Tupac, I'm sorry. You can't go from being a model to a damn thug and think that people are going to take you for serious answer no okay now also bobby brown contends that the only reason why he turned into a bad boy was because of whitney houston okay because actually that's when he said that it started answer no bobby brown you said that it started when he got put out the group the new edition group make up your mind nigga who edited did they did this book make up your mind you said that you got that oh no 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 was it your brother your brother said that the negative connotation of you being a bad boy was when he got put out the group mm -hmm. okay or it might have been when that bitch kim got your ass shot down there to the orchard park that might have been it okay or it could have been when you and your bff the rest of the soul jimmy or whatever the hell his name of when y'all used to ride around there to them middle class neighborhoods and steal them bikes maybe that could have been when you became a bad boy or maybe it was when you fried up that fucking cocaine chicken griselda blanco brown's son so now we at the point now where he ready to talk about his merge and how fucked up it was okay it's he is now talking about how he was so desperate to get out of the relationship that he left everything, including his Grammys, uh, his People's Choice Awards, every accolade that he received as being Don't Be Cruel, Bobby Brown. Now, he said that Whitney Houston's people took it and just threw it away or threw it in the air. I don't know. They might have took that shit and sold it on eBay. I don't know. Right. But see, what I really believe is that Bobby the Brown, that was a stunt that went wrong. You know, you were a dramatic, dramatic person. person. So when you exited, you had to be dramatic. Oh, OK, so, OK, you leaving, you leaving all your shit. You're supposed to be gone. You can have every damn thing. OK, but it didn't hit you until you were sleeping in somebody's goddamn. Uh, what is that? Uh, driveway 
that I fucked up. I shouldn't have left all my accolades there. You know, that was a dramatic scene that went Towards the right. end, okay. he started messing with Lou Rawls' daughter, Luana Rawls. Okay. Now, he, she was just a bump in a row. So was Kern. I'm like, is she going to talk about Corinne Stephens? You know? But anyway, she was just a bump in a row. She did indeed end up getting her feelings hurt. Because you know how the married niggas do. You know what they do. Oh, we over. It's done. I don't like her no more. Because, you know, married men do act out of passion in the heat of the moment. Especially when they're angry. So, you know, them motherfuckers will sing you the best song in the world. I'm through with her. She stole my money. She turned my kids again. Oh, that's a They will sing all them songs to you, child, and go right back to the bitch the next day. And Luana Rose got caught up in that, to be quite, you know, honest. And so did Kern. But I think Kern, Kern, he wasn't going to take you serious. Because remember, you slept with like uh, four out of the six new edition. Okay, so he wasn't going to take you serious. I don't even know why you even. Thought that he was going to take your ass serious, but, you know. I so, the thing about with um, Alicia was that they were friends a long time. You know, remember, Alicia was the one who was at the wedding who said, boy, go marry your dream girl. Okay. He also said that he was uh, fell in love with Alicia at first sight. I Let's move been. on to where Alicia and Bobby hook back up. Okay. Let's expand a little bit on that. Okay, so, you know, they had been longtime friends. And like I said, Bobby the Brown, you know, was a mess. And who to reach back out to but Alicia. They was in the same place, same time, okay? Bobby uh, needed someone to help him to stay together, okay? Yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm your wife, not your That's what Alicia uh, did. She took care of messy clients. And who was messy as fuck but the Bobby Brown. But she helped him to get back on his What Alicia said was that Bobby the Brown did not get the draws overnight. Okay. She said it took about a year for Bobby the Brown to get the draws. Okay. So what happened was he was sleeping either on her couch or in the car that she arranged for him to rent. I don't understand why... You have to arrange for cars to get rented out in California. What the fuck is that? I don't understand. You call Hertz, you call Enterprise, you call, you know, rent a bucket or whatever that is. I don't get that. But anyway, you know, Bobby Brown gives her kudos for helping him rent a car, you know, and helping him to get back on track. Dale, when his ass got locked up for child support payments, okay? You know, she dropped him off down there to the, you know, scuzzle bucket. Okay, to eat some crabs with his daughter. And then she see his ass get locked up. What the hell is going on here, Bobby? She said, that's not her life. Oh, that's your life now, bitch. That's your life now. Now, this is where LaPrincia Brown and Jackson says um, she felt like she dropped the ball when it came down to Bobby Christina. Okay, that actually there were times where she felt like she should have told her father about Bobby Christina's actions. You know, she said one time Bobby Christina came to visit her with some, uh, what do they call that shit in jail? Pruno? Was it Pruno? Something like that. It wasn't Pruno. It was some shit just as strong as that Pruno, right? The kids said they tried it. They couldn't drink it. But La Princia never told that Bobby Chris brung that shit to the party. Okay. Another example of when she knew that things weren't right in that house is when she met that dude, Nick Gordon. Okay. She's over the house visiting La Princia, Nick Gordon there. La Princia, like, uh, Bobby Chris, what the heck, Chrissy, what the fuck is this old ass man doing here? She says, oh, that's a friend. Nothing. Nothing's going on. That's a friend. The prince is like, do you know he got a mustache? That's a mustache. You know, because when you, yeah, that's a mustache. You know what they say about, you know, young men that got mustaches, play. Anyway, okay. That's a mustache, bruh. Okay, you need to um, ask your mother about, oh, my mother knows him. He's fine, okay. And what really shook La Princey up is when all three of them was in the house smoking weed. La Princey was like, what the fuck? She was so confused. She said, Alicia, girl, come get me. 
These people around here crazy. I ain't never seen shit before in my life like this. So here we are. We're at the point where Bobby Brown is talking about the breakdown between him and Bobby Christina. Okay. What he says is that Whitney told Bobby Christina that the reason why they weren't together, meaning Whitney and Bobby, was purely because of Bobby Brown's shenanigans. Okay. He said that Whitney talking bad to Bobby Christina about him um, put a wedge in between the two. He can recall a conversation that he had with Bobby Christina. Okay. Christy says, Dad, Mom says the only reason why you guys aren't together is because you won't stop cheating on her. Bob says that's not true. Chrissy gets out of a child's place, steps into an adult place, which is deplorable to me, and says, uh-huh, Daddy, it's you. Mommy says you the cheater. You can't get it right. Bobby couldn't resist, you know, you know that motherfucker. He that says to uh, Bobby Christina, uh, what the fuck is you talking about? What are you talking about? I'm the cheater. Your mama's a cheater too. No, that's not true, daddy. Oh, yes, it is. Because she fucking the shit out of Ray J. Bobby Christina says, that's not true. That's her friend. Bobby Brown says, bullshit the baker, man. Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. Now, remember this. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down, my naysayers. My patron loves you, babies. Have a good one. Peace.